Luke chapter 20, and uh, let's go to um, let's go to verse uh, starting in verse number one. Luke chapter 20, verse number one it says, "And it came to pass that on one of those days, as he taught the people in the temple and preached the gospel, the chief priest and the scribes came upon him with the elders." And spake unto him, saying, Tell us by what authority doest thou these things? And who is he that gave thee this authority? And he answered and said unto them, I will also ask you one thing, and answer me. The baptism of John, was it from heaven or of men? And they reasoned with themselves, saying, If we say from heaven... He will say, Why then believed ye not him not? But if we say of men, all the people will stone us, for they be persuaded that John was a prophet. And they answered that they could not tell whence it was. And Jesus said unto them, Neither tell I, I you by what authority I do these things. Let's pray. Father, I thank you for the message. Lord God, would you please anoint it. Lord, give us fresh oil. Lord, uh, Lord, bring something new into our lives today, Lord God, that we hear from you and not from any other place, Lord God, just from you. We say in our hearts, I came here to hear, hear the Lord, not from some preacher, not from some preacher, but, but Lord God, I came to hear the preaching and I came to hear from you. Lord God, would you talk to me? Would you talk to these people? Have pity on us and tender mercy, Lord God. Lord, if you would, let us go from here uh, today, and, and uh, Lord, after we're done fellowship and everything, Lord, would you please, Lord, would you help us today and, and take this further and, and be able to talk to people, Lord God. There's some question, there's a question in here that we need to have on our hearts too, Lord. Uh, I thank you for being uh, merciful to us, Lord, with tender mercies. I thank you, Lord God, for being merciful to us our congregation, Lord God, and also, Lord God, for those uh, who are not here, Lord, that you'd uh, help them as their home. Maybe they'd uh, look this up on, uh, you know, on YouTube or whatever, Lord, and get to listen to it or, or something else. So think of the things of you, Lord. We love you and just want to serve you. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, amen. So uh, what you have here is, uh, is a passage in which the scribes and the Pharisees and and the people, uh, basically, because they're around, uh, they come to uh, they come up to Jesus Christ, and they want to know something of Him. I mean, let's face it: when you start to do things in your life, people like to come around and like to ask some questions. If you would just uh, start to even talk about the things of the Lord, uh, what you'll notice is uh, when you when you start to talk about, talk about the Lord, people want to know by what authority uh, you say those things. That's what they're asking. By what authority are you saying these things? So I'm going to preach a message to you today. Uh, it's called, By Whose Authority? By Whose Authority? Uh, and, uh, and here's Jesus Christ here uh, dealing with the scribes and the Pharisees. One of the things you've got to understand about the Lord is, uh, the reason why they were able to, he was able to deal with scribes and Pharisees at many times is where he was at almost all the time. See, most of the time when they're around, where would they be around? They're around because at the synagogue or at the temple or whatever, that's where the scribes and the Pharisees are. That's where they're at. So where was Jesus? He's there too. Why? He's a Jew. He obeyed the law. He was at the right place at the right time, the appointed place that he was supposed to be at, Jesus Christ was at, uh, when it came time for the Sabbath, he was a Jew, he's at the synagogue, he's at the temple, uh, three times a year he presented himself at the temple with the other men It said all the men had to do that. Jesus Christ was at the right place at the right time. Uh, think about this, you are saved, you be Christian, uh, where are you supposed to be uh, Sunday morning? You say, well, you know, I don't have to go to church uh, to be saved. Uh, you got to understand something. That's, that's, that's immaterial. You're saved now. The church was made by Lord uh, for you to be in. Uh, where, you know, why would you treat the Lord like that? You have to think like that. Okay? So, now he's, uh, the Lord's out here, and, uh, and if, you, if you go around and you talk about 
the truth. Now, I'm talking about anything that's the truth. Uh, you're going to get yourself into a mess of trouble when you talk about the truth. Uh, why is that? Uh, because people don't like the truth. And you didn't either at one time. You didn't like the truth. You don't like when somebody uh, tells you what to do or somebody tells you, well, you know, you're just doing something wrong. You're just doing something wrong with the things you do. You don't like that. I mean, why would you like that? Nobody would like to be told uh, constantly they're doing something uh, wrong. But that's what the book does, doesn't it? It likes to tell you that you're doing things that are wrong uh, because, uh, guess what, the book is there for correction. It's there for correction, and you need a, you're a people that do need uh, correction uh, probably uh, more than you think that you need correction. And uh, here he comes out there. Jesus Christ is out there, and here comes all the big boys. Uh, look there at verse number 1, and it says, it says, and it came to pass on, uh, on those days as he taught. Now, you notice how he's teaching in the temple. He's not even, you know, did you notice that uh, he didn't have his, like, He's not the Sunday school teacher, basically, and uh, it's not like he has a set class. But, you know, when that burning inside is inside of you, you're going to teach. You're going to teach because uh, you know something. Okay, so Jesus Christ, obviously, he knows a lot. I mean, who do you think knows the Bible uh, more than the man who wrote it? Nobody. So he's in there and he's teaching, and it says in there, it says that uh, he was basically, he's stirring the pot. When you're given the truth, and you're giving the truth out, uh, you're stirring the pot. And here comes the big boys. And uh, when you're dealing with this, it says, you notice how it says in there, the chief priest. The chief priest is out there. Okay? Now, uh, a chief priest, he's the, he's the big boy that's, uh, that's obviously in charge. And what he gets around him, whenever you have a big boy around, you have what's called a lot of yes men. Uh, a lot of yes men are around. And you know why there's a lot of yes men around? You say, well, I know because he likes to be told yes. No, because all the no men are gone. As you get higher in your lifestyle, as you get higher in any type of, uh, in any type of institutional uh, place, uh, whether it be uh, in the police force or whether it be in the Army or whether it be Marine Corps, wherever, the further you go, the further you will be, the more you will be weaned out. You have to understand that. The further you go, the more you will be weaned apart. By the time you get to the hierarchy and the man that's closest to the guy on top, what he has around him is a bunch of yes men. So that's what you get when you get into having a guy who is a chief priest. You've got a bunch of yes men that are around, and what they're there for is to say when he turns around, he says, well, don't you believe this? They say, yes, I do. Sure, I believe that. Of course I believe that. That's, he's not going to have any. All the no men have been uh, gone away. They're no longer around. What do you think Hitler had around him? What do you think he had everybody going around him saying, no, you're wrong? All the, all the people that said they're no, you know where they are? They're dead. They're dead. Okay? That's why if you, you're not a yes person, uh, you probably will not make it in politics. You'll never make it in politics if you're, if you're not a yes man. You will never make it. Why? Because you'll say no to somebody, and they'll turn around and say goodbye. You can't make it there if you're a yes man, if you're not, if you're a no man, or if you're a truth be, uh, talker. So Jesus Christ is out there, and uh, he's he's with all the big men and the yes guys, and they ask him a question. If you look down there at verse number two, they turn around, they say uh, uh, by they say to him, they say, uh, "Tell us by what authority uh, doest thou these things." Or who? Notice they got a who. Pinpoint the man. Pinpoint somebody. Who gave you uh, these, this authority? You know, um, I've dealt with, uh, since being in any type of, uh, uh, any type of, uh, you know, uh, starting this church or whatever, what I've basically learned by starting it is, the moment you start it, the first thing they want to understand is, uh, they ask you, they say, uh, well, what school did you go to? That was the first thing they asked me when I came into this town. But they, they turned around they wanted to know what camp I was in. Uh, even when you deal with our Baptist brethren, the first thing they want to know is, well, what school did you go to? And uh, what they're trying to do is they're trying to label you so they can get rid of you. 
Okay, one of the biggest labels that most of us have on us is um, you, they want to label you as, like you'll say, well, uh, where, what school did you go to? Well, I went to uh, PBI. Oh, well, you're a rough enough. Uh, what, what Bible do you use? Well, I use the King James Bible. Well, uh, you, you, you know that Bible's just a translation? You see, what they're trying to do is they're trying to label you. What they're asking you is, by what authority uh, do you say what you say? Is what they're asking you uh, when they talk to you. And then no different than Jesus Christ, that's what they're asking Him. By what authority uh, do you say the things that you are saying? And that's what you got when you got saved. They told him, well, where do you go to church? And you say, well, I go to, I go to this place called uh, Bible Baptist Church. It's uh, just down the road. And uh, they say, oh, that one. Well, they're legalistic there. Uh, uh, what? They're legalistic. Now, I'm going to tell you the response that you can give when somebody tells you that this church is legalistic. When somebody says, well, that's a legalistic church. The greatest response that you can make to anybody is, I guess the church you go to is illegal. Well, think about that. If your church is legal, their church is illegal. Okay, you understand what I'm saying? You understand that what they're saying, what, what they're really doing right there is the, what they're, they're trying to do is they're trying to label you. They're trying to label you, therefore they can put you in your place. Which, uh, if anybody here uh, knows, there's, it's kind of hard to put a Bible believer in their place. Why? Because they're sitting there with Scripture. They're scared of you. They sit there with Scripture and, uh, and, deal, and they can't deal with you. You see? Because uh, they turn around and they say like something... Like, uh, well, you know that, that King James Bible you got? Uh, well, that, that, you know, that's, that, that's, not, that's just a you know, translation. There's a, there's a better one uh, over here, and you're sitting there uh, saying, well, you know, uh, the, words of the, the Word of the Lord is settled in heaven. Uh, or you're saying something like, uh, how many gods are there? And they say, that, well, you know, there's one. Well, how many saviors are there? Well, of course, there's, uh, there's one. Well... How many bread of life is there? Well, there's one. Well, why would there be 59 versions of the Bible? Well, you know those King James guys, they're, uh, they're just a bunch of uh, divisioners. They're, they're dividing and destroying uh, the body of Christ. Well, let me ask you something. Why? Well, because, see, they only believe in one book. They go around thinking they know it all. No, it wasn't one Bible that divided the body of Christ. It's when they introduced another one. That's when it started to make the division. Not by one, but by the other one. You see, it's one faith. It's one God. It's one Savior. It's one bread. It's one seed. It's one Bible. We got it. And they don't. And that's what they're upset about. Once in a while I get people that come up to me and they say, well, you know, uh, God speaks through all kinds of things uh, and, 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 and all, all things that He speaks through, uh, it's God's voice that you're starting to listen for. Okay. God said, faith cometh by hearing, hearing by the Word of God. you got the Word of God on you. I mean, it's easy. It's easy to deal with people. But um, they're asking him, what's, what basically, by what authority? You know, you know, Brother Jared, what school did you go to? Oh, I went to this school out in India. But well, wait a second, that's a school that does this, that's a school that does that. Well, they want to know the doctrine, basically, of what you got. They're envious. You know what they're envious of, these, these scribes and Pharisees? That God, God is doing something with, with, with whoever's there. People are actually uh, jealous of you that God would use somebody like you. That's what they're jealous of, that God Almighty would use uh, somebody like you uh, to do something. And that's what they get mad about. Uh, no different than, than even when you're in here. Okay? There's people in here that God just will use. You know? Uh, not saying there's somebody, but there's people that God will use. And uh, when that God uses that person, people get upset by those things. They don't like God using somebody else like they shouldn't be using them. You know, and that's what people get mad about. By, by whose authority uh, do you say these things? Let me label you. Let me get envious of you that God is using you. 
Okay? Uh, these, uh, how could God use a blue collared guy? You know, I got my uh, my PhD, my post hole digger de degree. I've got my uh, I've got my uh, DD. You know, uh, I told them this morning. Uh, uh, guys come around, they tell me, they say, "Do you know what the DD stands for?" And uh, and I say to them, "Yes, I do." And they say, "What?" I say, "It's dumb dog. It's a dumb dog that you got." Because what they're basically uh, trying to deal with is uh, trying to deal with their own insecurities that God would use uh, somebody like Miss Emily. Nobody could use. You don't understand. She's, she's from nowhere. Who would use her? Why would God, God Almighty, use somebody uh, like her to get, the, to get His point across? Well, why wouldn't He? He's using, he's using all kinds of fishermen and, uh, and people that aren't, aren't, aren't much. You see, if he was to use the talented, how much do you think they'd give him credit? If God would use the talented people of this world, if God would use all the nobles, if God were to turn around and use these men who call themselves uh, uh, Bible scholars, God would not get the credit. You know who, who they'd give the credit to? Themselves. They'd always give the credit to themselves. And how do you know that, preacher? I've dealt with them. You've dealt with them. I mean, they say how much they've done. You know, I'm a translator of that Bible. Uh, you know, why does God need you? I mean, think about it. He's already translated. It's already in English. Why would He need somebody to translate it again? Just something to think about. Just something to think about. But they're trying to label you uh, because they don't think God could use a uh, working man like you. But God turned around and He said a, a workman that needed not to be ashamed. He called fishermen. He called tax collectors. He called nobodies. Why? Because He's the somebody. It's all about Him in the end. He's got to get the credit or it is no good. Okay? Now, uh, verse number 3, He turns around and says, And He answered and said unto them, I will, I will also ask you uh, one thing, answer me. You see? He says, answer me. He says, now, he's somebody basically saying, now, uh, let me ask you something. Let me ask you something. You know, when somebody comes up to you and they say uh, something like, well, why would God use a, a man like you? Well, let me ask you something. Let me ask you something. Why would God use a man like you? What makes you uh, better than anybody? There's nothing. Nothing makes you better than anybody else. God can, like I said, God isn't prejudiced against who He saves, is He? Why would He be prejudiced against who He uses? You've got to think like that. Why would God be prejudiced against who He uses? I mean, you're nobody special. Nobody here has, uh, has done anything that's uh, basically uh, that incredible. And, uh, and God, wants to, well, God wants you to understand. The Lord wants you to understand. You say, you know, preacher, you're a little bit rambling. I just wanted to get through your head that God be the glory for the great things that He has done. And that's how you have to look towards the Lord Jesus Christ, that it's His glory. He's the one. I mean, let me ask you something. Ask Him a question for their question. You notice how the Lord did that? He answered, He gave them a question for the question that arise. Uh, to get them to think a little. And the next question they ask in verse number 4, they say, John's baptism. They want to narrow this down. And, and, and I mean, Christ turns around, He says, God's baptism, well, the baptism of John. What John was out there to do? He says, was it of God or was it of man? He says, was it of God? That's the question He asked. Was John's baptism of God? And now you get the great pondering of the great minds. Okay? Now, you've got to understand what they're, what they're looking at right there. They're saying, well, you know, if we were to say that that baptism is of God, He's going to say, well, why didn't you get baptized? Why didn't you listen to Him? Why didn't you do what God, what the, what, uh, God was saying if it was from God? You see? So, they're in a uh, kind of like a pickle right there. And they don't know what to say. They say, well, you know, if we say this, uh, uh, they'll, say, they'll turn around and say that. That's how people think. You know, if I, if I make them right, then they're going to say, well, you know, you should have been listening. But if, and, and if I make them wrong, they say, well, now i got another problem. If I turn around and say that, no, John, that these people think John's a prophet. They thought John was a pretty good man. Did you ever think of what John was doing? 
Let me, let me give it to you. Did you notice that nobody was out there upset what John was doing? There wasn't people standing around saying, hey man, we've got to stop this guy. We're going to turn around and get a hold of this guy, crucify this guy. If, if he was doing some major part of blasphemy, uh, don't you think that these people would have tried to stop him in every way? Why didn't they? I mean, he was out there putting them in the water. Uh, I know people in uh, schools, they say, well, that was a new thing. Well, if it was such a new thing that he was doing, why wasn't anybody uh, all upset about that? I mean, you've got to think like that. Nobody got upset. You know why? There's no word of, there's no word baptism in the Old Testament. It's a New Testament word. And the reason why is because in the Old Testament, there's no word that was translated into that. So what are you talking about? What about being bathed and washed? Did you ever think that maybe that's what they were doing to the priest? They were putting them in the water to get them all cleansed so that they could do the tabernacle, the work of the tabernacle with all those things? Was John not a Levi? His father was Zacharias, was he not? What was his job? He's a priest. What are you trying to say? Maybe, maybe John was that rightful one. What was he doing? He was putting people, he's saying, yo, separate yourself from all those people over there. Messiah's come, I'm preparing the way for him. You said, what are you trying to say? Maybe he was making that priesthood. I don't know, but maybe. Nobody was getting upset with what John was doing. That's one thing I know. And that just always caught me as uh, something that was odd that nobody was getting incredibly upset with what John was doing. And that always caught me odd that I could not figure out what was going on there? Now, I didn't say that's what it is. I just said presumably uh, maybe that was it. I didn't say that you don't... I, I know somebody's going to turn around and say, well, you know that preacher, he said this. No, I didn't say that. I said just think of it. I just said just think of it that maybe. I didn't say that was doctrine. Okay? So the next thing you get out of that is you get what's called an agnostic. We don't know. I mean, here you got all these years of education. You got all these years of these men that have been uh, sitting around uh, just thinking about uh, things of the Lord. And now all of a sudden they have no idea. They're the greatest agnostics that's, in, that's ever been. Is when you turn around and you give them something like that. And they say, well, you know, was it of, John, was it of uh, God or was it of a uh, man? And they turn around and they say, well, you know, the people get upset. Well, we don't want to get any derision right here. Well, we don't really know. And he turns around, he, he turns around, and you know what the Lord does? He, he, he read the, see, the Lord knows the Bible. He knows the Bible real well, obviously. And uh, in the Bible, it turns around, if you were to go to uh, Proverbs, go to Proverbs chapter 26. Proverbs chapter 26. And in Proverbs chapter 26, you look down there at verse numbers 4 and 5. At verse number 4 and 5. And you know what it says there? It says, answer, answer not a fool according to his folly, doesn't it? And then the next verse says, answer a fool according to his folly. See, Jesus Christ ain't going to answer them according to their folly. You see, they couldn't even come up with the answer. Answer not a fool according to his folly. I ain't going to tell you anyway. Why? Because you don't know what God said anyway. You can't recognize God's Word is what He's saying to them. When a guy's speaking to you, he says, he starts speaking to the oracles of God. If uh, the Bible says in it, that if uh, they that are of God, heareth what? They hear God's word, don't they? He that is of God heareth God's word. You don't hear God's word because you're not a God. You see? So he doesn't answer that fool according to his folly that's there. And he turns around and he just says, well, the baptism of God. I mean, the baptism of John, was it of, was it of God or was it of man? They can't even express themselves. Can't even express themselves whether it was of God or was of man. And that's a folly on them. 
that they couldn't, they couldn't even recognize God. Here they were studying all those years about this guy that was going to show up, this Savior, and here he was standing in front of them and they didn't even know it. You know why? Because he that is of God heareth God's Word. You don't hear it because you're not a God. Is basically what that was coming down to. And then he starts to go into what we call a parable from verses 9 to 19 if you look down there. And he says, you know, there was a certain man there was a certain man who had a vineyard. And this certain man who had a, who had a, a vineyard, he, uh, he, let, he, he let it out to these kings and these governors. You know what he's trying to tell them? He gave them, he gave them these people, Israel, God's people. He turned around and gave them God's people right there. And uh, he turns around and he says, I gave uh, these, uh, these priests authority. I gave them authority. He says, uh, over the people, to take care of the people, basically what he's saying. And uh, he gave them his people. And it says in that season, he sent a servant to collect the fruit. And the leaders, you know what they do? They kill the preachers and the teachers trying to help them out. They turn around and they kill the preachers and the teachers that God sends to help them out. And they're there to collect that fruit. That season. He sent the servants there to collect that fruit. And the leaders killed them teachers and killed them prophets and they were trying to help them. So the next thing the Lord does is shows them more mercy. Isn't that something? Can you imagine if, if, if we got a great God. We got an awesome Savior. Even when we're all messed up, He, tried, he still gives us mercy. Even though we're all messed up. And He sends a, He turns around He sends a, another he turns around and he sends another. He sends his only son. And you know what they do? They turn around and they, 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 he sent his son. They took him. And you know where they take him? They take him outside the camp, it says. And they kill him. And they kill him too. God be trying to help them. And what do they do? They kill. They always kill when God tries to help them. Okay? They take him outside and they wonder, what would the, what would the master do? What would the master do with this? Uh, he's going to give the vineyard to somebody else, it says, to others in verse number 16. And you'll notice that parable, it was right afterwards because the first word in 9 is then. Okay? Now, go to uh, Matthew chapter 21. Matthew chapter 21, look down there, uh, uh, verse, number, um, verse number 43. Verse number 43. And in verse number 43, it says, uh, Therefore say I unto you, this is the same as he says, The kingdom of God shall be taken from you, and given to a nation, bringing forth the fruits thereof. Hey, if you don't want to be used, God will use somebody else. If you don't want to be used, God can use somebody else. That's basically what he's saying to them there. You don't want to be used? There's always somebody else that want to be used. You know, God isn't prejudiced against who he saves. He's not prejudiced against who he uses. If you don't want to do it, we'll just get somebody else to do it. Nobody here, when, when somebody, I remember when I was, uh, when I was uh, younger, they used to say, well, you know, uh, uh, if... Uh, if when we get to the judgment seat of Christ, all these people are going to be upset because, uh, you know, the blood's going to be upon them. No. If you don't want to be used, God will use somebody else. Everybody's going to get the gospel. And guess what? If you don't want to be used, God will just use somebody else. Don't be, upset. don't be upset when He does use somebody else. And uh, don't be given them by what authority uh, do they say these things. Because guess what? That authority is going to be of Jesus Christ. you just got to recognize it. Well, what are you trying to say? He gives the. He turns around. And he says, "I'm going to take it out of you because you guys couldn't uh, hold it right, and I'm going to give it to somebody else." And that's how we got in. By what authority? Jesus showed you his authority. He healed the sick. He cleansed the lepers. He told him. He said, "All power is given unto me to forgive sin." 
He said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life, and no man come to the Father but by me. He said he was God. You know, it's not about who gives the authority. It's about are you willing to accept the authority. When you hear God's voice, are you willing to accept the authority? By whose authority do you say these things? Well, did you pray about it? Did you ask about it? Did you fast about it? I mean, before you, before you turn around and, and question it so much and say, was it of God or was it of men? You, you, you need to ask that question. You need to ask that question. Hey, look! You just walk into a church and you walk in and they got an NIV sitting up on the thing. Is the NIV of God or is it of men? You know. Why are you supporting that ministry? Why would you support that ministry? Hey, uh, we got the King James Bible, but it's just a good translation that we read from. If it's a good translation, then what it is is the words of men. Is it of God, that ministry, or is it of men? Think about that. God gets up and says, I believe the book. I believe the book, and I'm here. I'll ask God. I got that on my hands and knees. I'll ask God, I pray for him. I pray for the words. I pray for the preaching. I pray for this. I, I, God, talk to me. Is it of God or is it of men? By whose authority? Do you say these things? By whose authority is the preaching coming from? That's where you have to look at. By what authority is it being said? Because what you're going to find out is I've seen it so many times. I've watched people ripping apart preachers. I've seen them ripping apart preachers' wives. I've watched them just keep going and going and going, just ripping apart, ripping apart, ripping apart. And then they turn around and think they got something and they say to them, the best question you can say, let me ask you something. The man called? Yeah, I believe he's called. He believes the book. Well, why didn't you listen to him? It gets quiet when you say that. Is it of God or is it of man? By what authority does he say these things? Is it of God or is it of men? Take your book out and check on it. Is it of God or is it of man? You have the ability to check on anybody that's out there, don't you? God gave it to you. He said, prove all things. Keep the that which is good, right? Is it of God or is it of man? You have the right book. It's this one right here. It's the King James Bible. Never been proven a mistake in it. No man's ever proven a mistake. If he has, there's a million dollars sitting for you. You can go get it. Never been proven a mistake. Is it of God or is it of man? Witnessing out on the streets with God's Word. Is it of God or is it of man? Well, you know, you shouldn't be doing these things. shouldn't be street preaching. shouldn't be doing this. Is it of God or is it of man? That's what you need to ask. Is it of God or is it of man? But when God shows you that it's of God and you know it and it's proven in the book and you don't even have to have God say it and prove it. If it's in the book, guess what? It's of God. There's some things you don't even have to pray about because you already know. God said, preach the gospel to every creature, did He not? They're preaching the gospel out there. Is it of God or is it of man? Makes you think. By whose authority? Did John do these things? By whose authority did Christ do these things? By whose authority did Dewey Stewart go out and do these things? Preacher down in Watertown. By whose authority? By the authority of this book in Jesus Christ who told him to go do it. Amen. By whose authority is what the message is. Very short message today. Let's pray. Father, I thank you, Lord God, for this time. Ask you, Lord God, if you would, to bless that message, Lord God. Anybody here need to get saved? Today's the day. You know someday, no matter what, you're going to die. You know you're going to die. The Bible says it's appointed unto man wants to die, and after this, the judgment. Someday, you're going to die. The next question is, how will you be judged? Because it says after this, the judgment, and everybody believes that God's going to make it right. God's going to make it right. How will you be judged?
Then the next thing is that Christ died for your sins. That's a historical fact. Jesus Christ died on the cross. He died for your sins. That's the gospel. The Bible says the just for the unjust. Jesus Christ is the just. Who's the unjust? Why, that's you. And if you know that you're unjust, don't you want to be brought back to God? Why don't you just call upon His name and ask Him, Lord, remember me. Father, uh, Father, uh, Lord God, I, I, I believe uh, uh, I'm a sinner and Christ died for me. Maybe that's you. I accept Jesus Christ as my personal Savior. I'm trusting on Your blood to forgive my sins. I'm trusting on You, Lord Jesus, for Your eternal life, my salvation. Christian, whose authority? Is it of God or is it of men? Is it of God or is it of men? That's something to think about. Right now, you know somebody that's unsaved. Just think of that person right now. Everybody here knows somebody that's unsaved. Just one person. Maybe just ask, them, ask the Lord to have mercy on them. Just ask the Lord to have mercy on them. Lord Father, I, I thank You, Lord, that You'd have mercy on that person. Lord, have mercy. Bring gospel to that pe that, them people, Lord God. Please let us help in Governor, Lord. Bring the gospel to Governor. I thank You, Lord God. I ask You, Lord God, to be with us the rest of the day, the rest of the weekend. Let us have a good fellowship over here, Lord God. If You would, bless the food that's over there, Lord God, and nourish it to our bodies and our bodies to the Lord Jesus Christ. In the name of our Lord, Amen.